Mr. Chairman, sir, I rise to highlight some of the problems that have arisen after the decision to demonetize 500 rupees and 1,000 rupee currency note. Prime Minister has been arguing that this is the way to curb black money, to prevent growth of forfeited currency note, and also to help in control of terrorist finance activities. I do not disagree with these objectives. But what I do want to point out is that in the process of demonetization, monumental mismanagement has been undertaken with, about which today there is no two opinions in the country as a whole. Even those who say that this mayor will do harm or will cause distress in the short run, but be in the interest of the country in the long run, will, I am reminded of what John Keynes said once, in, in the long run, all of us are dead. And therefore, it is important to take note of the grievances of the people, the ordinary people, who have suffered as a result of this imposition on the country overnight by the Prime Minister. And I say so with all responsibility that the outcome, we do not know what will be the final outcome. Prime Minister has said that we should wait for 50 days. Well, 50 days is a short period, but for those who are poor and deprived sections of the community, even 50 days torture can bring about disastrous effect. And that's, and, and that's why about 60 to 65 people have lost their lives, maybe more. And what is more is, what has been done can weaken and erode our people's confidence in the currency system and in the banking system. One, I would like to know from the Prime Minister the names of any countries he may think of where people have deposited their money in the banks but they are not allowed to withdraw their money. This, this alone, I think, enough to condemn what has been done in the name of greater good to the people in the world. And, sir, I would further like to point out that, in my opinion, this scheme of monetization, the way it has been implemented, will hurt agricultural growth in our country, will hurt small industry, will hurt all those people who are in the informal sectors of the economy. And my own feeling is that the national income, that is the GDP of the country, can decline by about two percentage points as a result of what has been done. This is an underestimate, not an overestimate. Therefore, I feel that the Prime Minister must come with some constructive proposal how we can implement the scheme and at the same time prevent this distress that has been caused to the common people. It is no good that every day the banking system comes with modification of the rules, the conditions under which people can withdraw money. That reflects very poorly on the Prime Minister's office, on the Finance Minister's office, and on the Reserve Bank of India. 
I am very sorry that the Reserve Bank of India has been exposed to this sort of criticism, which I think is fully justified. I therefore not like to say much more than this. I urge upon the Prime Minister to find practical, pragmatic ways and means to relieve the distress of the people who happen to be a great majority of our people. After all, 90% of our people work in the informal sector. 55% of our workers in agriculture are healing distress. The cooperative banking system, which serves large number of people in the rural areas, is non-functional. It has been prevented from handling care. So, in all, all these measures, convince me that the way the scheme has been implemented, it's a monumental management failure. And in fact, it is a case of organized loot and legalized plunder. With these words, sir, I conclude it is not my intention to pick holes in what one side does or another side does, but I sincerely hope that the Prime Minister will, even at this late hour, will help us to find practical, pragmatic ways and means to relieve, provide relief to the suffering people of this country. Thank you. Thank you.